Lewis, welcome to the Personal Best Podcast. Thank you very much. How are you doing, first of all? I'm okay. I'm yeah. good. I'm okay. Um, I'm a little bit nervous. Um, mm-hmm. As I mentioned to you before, I'm not, I get a little <laughs> bit nervous re- recording podcasts and whatnot and, and kind of sharing my truth, I suppose. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm okay. A little, b- a little bit overwhelmed with life at the moment in the most positive way. Yeah. In that there's lots of exciting things going on, but it's very, it's very much a balancing act. Uh, I feel like one of those guys spinning plates and mm-hmm. they're wobbling a lot at the moment. But um, mm. it's all good. I'm, it's, uh, it's good. It's exciting. I get that completely. I always use the ana- analogy that I'm like treading water mm. and like you kind of just staying afloat, but like it feels feels like feels someone's difficult. dragging you down. <laughs> so, so a few people <laughs> dragging on your feet, but. Uh, well, yeah. you're doing you're doing some awesome stuff, so we'll get into that uh, today. But first of all, just for everyone listening, can I ask you to give a little personal intro? Where are you from? What do you do? Okay, so my name is Lewis Robin. Mm-hmm. I am from Wales. I'm a Welshie. Um, I thought I could hear a Welsh accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A small village called Cleen in Wales. Um, grew up there, moved away. I'm 22. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna not go too deep into it. But um, uh, from Wales, and I am an ex professional rugby player. I am now a ultramarathon running coach um mm. and that has kind of been my transition over the last kind of three or four years from rugby player to coaching but um, that's who i am yeah uh, i think i mean that question who i am you can go a lot deeper i know, um, I know. so i'm gonna keep it surface level for now <laughs> that's so good that's so good i wasn't sure if i was gonna mention this but i used to watch your girlfriend steph's youtube did you really? yes and so i feel like i um have a i guess like an old view of of who you are and I feel like (laughs) that from five years ago has probably changed a lot in terms of like what you're doing now so I'm just I'm really excited to you know get to know a bit more about your story and your journey so you mentioned there that you were a professional rugby player Mm -hmm. first of all how did you get into that and then I guess how have you then made the transition from rugby to running so oh gosh that, that, that is a long story so I'll start with rugby Rugby as a young Welsh kid, that like growing up playing rugby for a club, like your dream is to play for your country. Yeah. Your dream is to be a professional rugby player. Like in Wales, rugby is the main sport. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are so many amazing values that come as part of being a rugby player, like the, the being part of a team, the the trust that you have in each other on, on the field. There's so many positive values that come from it. Um, and the fact that you go outside, you're, you're playing around, you're playing around with your mates every weekend, and it's something that you really enjoy. Um, it just so happened that I was I was quite good at it as well. And, mm. and from the age of sixteen, I got picked up by um, my local region, which were the Dragons. Uh, and then from sixteen years old, it was kind of in a system whereby I'd be training three times a week with an academy. Um, and at seventeen, I started playing a, playing senior rugby. So then twice a week would be driving to when I could when I could drive was mm. driving to uh, Newbridge with my first club, and that was kind of second division Wales leagues um a young 17 year old outside half I'm not sure how much you know rugby but outside half is is like the calls the shots I had mm-hmm. a bleach blonde hair <laughs> and I got absolutely bullied for a year but I actually <laughs> look back really fondly of that first season of playing rugby because I probably learned the most about myself as a and, and proved myself as a young rugby player mm. with adults at that time mm. even though they, they I mean it it was tough for so many reasons. I think I actually grew the most that year as a rugby player. But um, yeah. and then from that, uh, I followed the system. And um, because I was I was good at rugby, um, it was a very kind of step by step process. Was playing for the next team, Newport, and then the next transition. I was lucky enough to play for my country um, at under 18s wow. level and then under 20s level as well in the World Cup. We had a month in Italy, which is amazing. Um, and then continued to play for the uh, full team professional team until I was 23, and then moved to Jersey for three years and. Had a had about six years playing in the English Championship leagues then. Um, wow! So rugby's yeah. taken up like a big portion of your <sighs> yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. I, really? I mean, I, r- it was all I knew. It was mm. absolutely all I knew for ten years. Um, I did dabble um, as I was a because I think as a rugby player you forget how much time you had. Like it, it was it, as a, so much as you were full time professional. You train twice, three times a day. You'd have yeah. one day off a week, but really. You start training at 8 a.m., you finish by 1 p.m. Um, so you have so much time to think. And really, um, 
you had a lot of, t of spare time. So I think the early parts of my career, I didn't really value education as much. I mean, I tried to go to university. It was um, university or uh, full time pro mm. rugby player, 18 <laughs> years old. And the decision <laughs> was quite. <laughs> yeah. And, and the degree <laughs> the degree I chose was actually it was a full time degree. Um, and it just it just didn't work alongside playing full time sport. So I was trying to do too much of everything and, and was actually failing at both. So mm. I needed to take that plunge and, and dive headfirst into into full time sport, which is which is absolutely the right re like decision at the time. Um, but yeah, so that was that was rugby. I retired actually at the start of lockdown. Um, I say I retired on my own terms. Yeah. Was that an active choice? Probably not, mm. if I'm totally honest, because mm -hmm. I didn't have the courage to step down before that. Um, that's all I knew and if I'm totally honest I fell out of love with the sport maybe 25 26 um, and looking back at it I could resented it a lot as well because I felt like I left a lot of my potential um, for whatever reason I, res I resent I never I never quite made it to the levels that I felt like I could mm -hmm. for whatever reason yeah 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 and um, sometimes like you can't always identify what that reason is but it's there yeah, and, like, I, and I think that, you, that nail on the head, I didn't know what that reason was yeah. because I'd never spent the time actually looking back and yeah, asking yeah, myself. Yeah. I didn't put the mirror up. You don't, um, and there's no. like so many distractions and probably people telling you different things. Like yeah. I'm kind of dealing with it now because um, I'm soon to finish uni and it's yeah. constant. What are you going to do? What are you doing next? What are you, you're applying for jobs. You're doing the podcast, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I just need to sit and like mm. think about this and what do I want to do? And it's really difficult Um going through that period of transition as well. So obviously you did retire from rugby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then now you're doing these crazy ultra marathons and things. Talk me through that transition a little bit. Okay, so lockdown came about and I think everyone was in the same boat. Yeah. The world ended. Yeah. We had one opportunity today, a day to get outside and I, and I was so used to being active that I needed something to, to turn to. Um, and rug and running was the easy choice. So I started running um, and it became a habit. I very much enjoyed it. I was inspired by a few people doing different things in, 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 that, in that field because the more you do it, the more you see what else is going on, especially yeah. as um, social media started to become a little bit of, of a part of my life. Not that I chose it to, but mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're going out with someone who is very <laughs> successful in what they do on social media, it's kind of almost a waste of an opportunity not to have like a, your own in influence and to try and help people via a different way. But anyway, started running and um, I read Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Yeah. And because I was kind of in a bit of a headspace where um, I was looking for something, rugby didn't really, uh, there was a bit of resentment to the sport and I think subconsciously I needed something to, to work towards to, to mm. keep moving forward. And um I read this book and it felt like I'd, it opened my eyes to the capabilities of, of human potential. Like what, yeah. what can we actually do? Like reading his story and understanding where he came from and how he applied himself to it and what he overcame. I was like, well, why can't I do something like that? Mm. So I decided to do the 4448 challenge, which is his kind of signature uh, run four miles every four hours for 48 hours. So wow. essentially no sleep um, is the biggest part of it. And I, and I trained for four weeks, uh, I ran four miles every four hours and gradually built that up to the point where I did two days back to back, I think four on a four, so four miles, four times each day. Yeah. Um, and not only did I do that, but I, I it was a, a tough time where, um, Steph was meant to run the marathon, um, for her granddad who was suffering with dementia and yeah. she was going to do it for Alzheimer's research UK. And, um, Sadly, he passed before the marathon, but obviously the marathon was cancelled as well. So mm. it was an opportunity. I thought, well, not only can I do something for myself here and and pr and run some sort of challenge that will make me feel good, but also can I align that with giving back to the people I was around me? Because I was living with Steph and her parents at lockdown as well. Yeah, and it turned out to be an amazing experience, and um, somehow raised ten thousand pound in in two days, um, wow. which was incredible and. The way the way I did it was, it was it was almost like a, a lesson in how to plan meticulously for a project and execute it with that detail and and the result and the byproduct of doing that well was this outcome where not only did I, I exceeded my own expectations in how well I felt during the the event but also the planning I remember laying out my kit I laid <laughs> out all my like literally meal prepped everything so that every time that I finished the run I had the meal ready to go and then I'd sleep for the next three hours and it was just so Teaches meticulous you a lot. taught me a lot yeah um and the reward was 
incredible. It far exceeded. And the way I felt was incredible as well because not I was giving back to something bigger than me, mm-hmm. um, which at the time I didn't realize how much it affected me and what it taught me because I never took the time to reflect on why it was so successful. Because I think that's a that's another trait of um, nowadays and age. You, you see everyone's doing marathons left, right and center. But um, and it's always like there's always the next marathon, the next marathon, yeah. the next marathon. Yeah. So when I was playing rugby, it was it was never just, OK, we won that weekend. Well done. Monday would be spent going through that game and meticulously analyzing what went well, what didn't go so well. So we had things to work on for the next game to improve. Mm. How We don't do that in real life, really. Yes. Not well enough anyway. I, don't, I, I personally don't think we spend enough time. So. I mean, not to not to beg up my coaching <laughs> t- t- <laughs> but like part of part of reflecting on a race and something that means so much to you. So there's so much energy and effort goes into it. And actually, part of the part of the whole process is that reviewing what went well and what didn't go so well, because you can draw from that experience and use it to make decisions moving forward. So um, true. Yeah. And yeah. With all of that, then, I'm so interested in this contrast between obviously playing rugby, which is a team sport. I imagine mm. there's like a lot of bravado involved and also like camaraderie to then running long distances often by yourself or maybe with like one or two people there what are the key things you've learned from this like long distance running compared to your time playing rugby I think I realize there's more in common with both the the longer the distance (laughs) okay well as as I to answer your question from the uh, the previous I kind of skipped that question and I got into ultramarathon running but I, an opportunity came up to go to do an ultramarathon that September um, and I said yes with with not on enough time to train and that that experience was my first experience in ultramarathon running and it was profound it was incredible um, and maybe we'll get onto that in a minute but I, I realized that actually the longer in distance that you go the more the challenge becomes because rugby was very competitive it wasn't mm. just competitive on a weekend when you're playing against a team. It was also co- internally very competitive. Mm. So every day you'd go to training, whether it be in the gym or be on the field, and you're competing against your best mates as to like who's going to play on the weekend or not. And and as a result of that on the weekend, like you could be playing and they're not, they're missing out on a job opportunity. This is so this is like serious competition all the time. Whereas I feel like with ultra marathons, there is no competition between runners as to how fast you go because the challenge is, is enough in itself. Yeah. So the result yeah. of doing that is that you just lift each other. So this you create this t- and it it's more prevalent again over multi day events. I've, I've been lucky enough to do a few multi day events mm-hmm. now in the last couple of years, and when you're in an environment, nothing else. It's almost like a little bubble away from real life. Yeah. But and it could be in wherever you are but you're you're all sleeping together in tents or whatever and it's just a very um uncomfortable environment and you've got each other to lift you've got each other to support to get to the end of this race um and the best of team sports shows himself shows itself but also you're the only one responsible as to whether you get to the end or not yes people can encourage you yes yes they're able to lift you and support you but really you're the only one taking one foot in front of the other and that's really empowering in itself mm. and a lot of the times in these races you'll spend 90 percent of it on your own so that that journey is very isolating it's very confronting um and you meet yourself um, yeah and sometimes you don't like that person that you meet sometimes mm. that person is negative sometimes that person no matter like depending on the level of pain or discomfort that you're in that person's looking for every excuse and every way out of that situation to the point where at times I've I've wished injury upon myself just as a, an excuse to get out of that yeah. environment and yeah. that but <laughs> it doesn't matter because and, and, and at those times as well there's so many different kind of reasons as to why you should finish or why you should keep going pop it when you mind it's 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 so ac- you're so active yes. there's so many different things going on and I think the, the most important part is if you can continue to move forward it doesn't matter what thoughts you're thinking so long as you get to the finish um it's 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 a really uh, it's a really incredible experience that you can draw so much from um Mm, i'm yeah even just the way you're like explaining it then i'm like i want that i want some of that um, but i understand that you also have to put your body through so much in order to arrive at that place yeah it's it's (laughs) it's a really interesting psychology um, mm. and this is what I think a lot of the reason when, when I'm coaching again is, is it's asking people what, well why are you doing this in the first place mm-hmm. like what is what is the and some people don't know like for, for example I can only talk about my own story I didn't know why I, I needed that ultramarathon before I before I did it um, and it was only the aftermath that I, 
after I finished and I realized actually nothing's changed that I needed to go back and do the work mm. um, to understand why I was doing it. Yeah. But then moving forward, because I'd done the work and I knew what I was gaining from it, I knew how much it was impacting my life, I knew the people I was uh, were meeting were more like me, that, that I felt a, a new sense of community. I knew that doing hard things, it, it meant that life was easier as a result of doing hard things. I could prove to, m- I proved to myself I could, I could move forward despite having challenge left, right and center. Um, mm. It, yeah, it's, um, but obviously for everyone, it's not for everyone. Mm. And, and it's, what's hard is that in this world nowadays is that you look at social media and it seems like everyone's doing a marathon, everyone's doing an ultra marathon, but someone's version of an ultra marathon could be something different. It could, yes. be, it, it could be a new skill. It could be learning to play piano. You know, it could be like a new deg- a degree and you'll still experience those same feelings of like challenge that you have to overcome, but in just in a yeah. completely different way. And a mi- a time and a place, maybe I think having a physical goal is very important for everyone to strive for. Um, just because of the the benefits that you you gain from a health perspective and the understanding of your own physiology of your body and how all that works and how you c- how it makes you a better thinker how you're able to absolutely just be a better human as a result. But yeah, um, yeah. Someone um we'll get onto it a bit later, but I watched the Why We Run documentary, oh, which is you? the documentary of the mm. the ultra marathon race, and um, I think it was a lady called Jen said within that that life makes you a better ultra runner and then ultra running makes you better at life yeah. and I was like gosh that like really sums it up doesn't it but I um just wanted to go back to obviously when you did that first ultra marathon race and uh you said in a an Instagram post that you learned more about yourself in those two days than you had in 10 years mm. just wondered if you could expand on that and what that was like it's it's hard to explain. I think um, I realized that I was running away from the pain that I was feeling in the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, I'd never experienced that much pain before, mm. yet was still able to move forward. I'd never experienced like community and help from people like that before. No, no that's, that's, uh, that's probably incorrect. But I think what I learned about myself was it's felt I felt like I'd opened my eyes to like what I could actually achieve. Um, that I wasn't limited by any perception. Like I, I had no right to be on that start line in the first place. I trained for, I only ever, I did, did the David Goggins challenge in the June. And this was the September and I only ever ran a half marathon in one go before that point, like four weeks beforehand. Really? And I'd never eaten and ran before. I'd never done all these things. So I had no right to be stood on that start line yet. I was able to, to run 125 kilometers, 50k of it, day two with a torn calf. And mm. that that co- sounds very egoic and it sounds like I'm bigging myself up, but it was, it, for me internally, it was like, I can do anything. Yeah. Like, wow, I can do anything. Yeah. Yet when I finished and I sat back down at my desk and at the time I was running a coconut bowl business on my own every day, <laughs> like random, I know. But, um, and uh, that business at the time wasn't going too well. So another for me, it was another nod that I, I I couldn't achieve anything yet. So when I sat back down and I was at my laptop and I was started to think about selling coconuts again, nothing mm. changed. Mm. Nothing changed, and that was one of the big realizations. And and it was only, um, it was only in that time that I uh, that I realized um, after a few phone calls with a close friend, Chloe, who was um, with a charity called Big Moose, so based in Cardiff, support people with their mental health. Um, she noticed something about four weeks after that that. I didn't sound quite right. And it was only then when I realized, actually, I think I need help here. Mm. Um, so, and it was only in that help and in the therapy that I actually realized why I was doing what I was doing. And that was the catalyst that started the next four years. Like why we run is the result of me reaching out for help at that, at that moment in time, because I learned more about myself in those two days. Yes. But I learned even more so when I went and actually faced myself because that was the real challenge. Yeah. The running, the physical stuff, I realized we, we, you can push through pain barriers. You can do all these things, amazing. But facing yourself is 10 times harder than actually d- d- doing, that, doing that thing. Yeah, um, and you're so right that um, like running encourages you to confront those things because I guess it's very easy to just keep doing the miles and think that you know this is me working through stuff, but 
it's almost the stuff you do after that and like outside of it that mm. actually helps you kind of dig a bit deeper and get to the root of like your feelings and I think you reframed it really nicely when you said that you're now running towards those mm. feelings and you explore them rather than you're running away from something yeah it, it, it was an awareness that I, I'm not running away anymore yeah I'm running towards I'm running at these feelings I'm, I'm running to find out more about myself I'm running to to learn more I'm, I'm I'm running for a different reason I know why I'm doing it um and 2021 was all about that and I remember um I think the proving the proving to myself that I was enough was the main thing that I was running towards that was the that was the ticket for me it was like okay you don't you're you're good like you're fine mm. and I got that at the end of well, midway through 2021 I did my first 250k ultra marathon uh, it was the first time Ultra X ran their event in Wales, um, and it was over five days. And I remember finishing that race. Again, it was just absolutely, I think I described it as beautifully brutal, because <laughs> you're going through an ultra marathon. And it, do you know what? Funnily enough, it makes you so grateful. Mm. Like, yes, you're in all this pain, you're in all this discomfort, and you're, you're, you're doing such a, but then you get to the top of a mountain, you look around, you're like, oh, yeah. like, wow, like, look where I am, look what I am able to do. I get, it's the whole narrative you see every, I get to do this. This yes. is my choice. I'm choosing this rather than when it's an unconscious choice. You're almost like running away. That It's empowering to know that this is my decision. I am choosing to be better. Mm. Um, so I, but at the end of that race, I remember um, getting to the finish line and it's almost like I took a massive, just a deep breath, just like a, an exhale. And it was just like, uh, like I'm good. I, yeah. I, I'm done. And, and it was at that time, actually, um, you mentioned why we run. It was at that time where I thought, you know what, I'm, and funnily enough, as a result of running towards these experiences, with each experience, I, I felt like I grew as, a, as an individual and consequently things were happening off the field, <laughs> off, the, <laughs> off, off the ultras um, that, were, that were aligned with me putting myself out there, me willing, the willingness to move forward, the willingness to be a better person. Opportunities were coming as a result of that. It's, um, have you read The Secret? Or heard about the secret? I've heard about it's, it. It's, it's, yeah. I'm going to butcher this. I know I am, but it's 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 almost like a, it's, it's about your energy and how you attract a similar type of en energy in return. Yeah. And I felt like the universe was kind of rewarding me for for my willingness to to be open, to be vulnerable, to be honest, to to mm. share and to 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 be willing to step into the unknown, like mm. to do something that I didn't know if I could actually achieve or not, but I was willing to try. I was willing yeah. to take a risk and. Um, yeah, and it was only at the end of that race then um, was that I felt like I was in a strong enough position. I was like, right now, now I've done it for me. I've, I'm, I've, I feel like I've, I've achieved what I set out to achieve internally. Now it's time to give back, um, mm. and that's how the kind of five two fifties came about in twenty twenty two, which ultimately led to the uh, to the birth of why we run. So five yeah. two hundred and fifty kilometer runs. Yes. In yes. one in it was like eight months, wasn't in it? In eight months. That's yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's not normal. Um, it's not normal. <laughs> it's not normal. Um, so, uh, I mean, do you want to know about it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. like, was that an active choice? Were you like, I'm going to do this, this, and this? This, this was this was a choice because Big Moose, like I, I very briefly touched on, that Big Moose were there for me. And they, and they support people by providing early intervention therapy for those mm -hmm. that need it. Um, and funny enough, one of the things I struggled with asking for help was I feel, didn't feel like I deserved it um, because I wasn't, I wasn't, ill enough to, to i always felt like i was wasting their time but um i think that's a that's something that people still because i'm i'm I'm, ad, I'm a, an ambassador and an advocate for, for big moose I, th I think it's one of the most incredible tools out there um and i very much see it as a um a proactive choice um rather than reactive if you can actively seek to learn about yourself I something if you, if you want to it's, it's like seeing a challenge head on you're you are the challenge yes if you, you can better understand yourself and use that tool to be better then anyway um but i felt like it was my time to give give back to the charity um in the way that they gave to me and uh, i went to ultra x and ultra x had supported me the whole time as well so i thought you know what if there's any way that i can drum up a bit of support for ultra x in the meantime then great and they had five 250k races at the time um and i asked i said has anyone ever has anyone ever done all five they were like what in in one year I said yeah it's like no no one's stupid enough <laughs> to do that, do that? <laughs> <laughs> I am. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I and I explained to them why I wanted to do it. I explained to them the goal was to raise twenty five thousand pounds for charity uh, for for Big Moose that year, and um, they very very kindly um, offered to to give me the race entries for free. So 
um that was the 2020 2022 mission mm. and um yeah they were in sri lanka slovenia wales um yeah. the desert and then meant to be mexico um that some of the experiences were just out of this world yeah um, i bet yeah but i i really love that you know you took something that was very personal to you and then you sort of wanted to give back um obviously by raising money for for charity and and that charity then helps people with their mental health in the way mm -hmm. they helped you and i just think that's such a a noble mission to go on yeah it, it is it, it's almost like a full circle moment yeah. but um don't get me wrong i'm not uh, i <laughs> I'm not going to pretend that it wasn't. I wasn't doing it for me as well. Oh, of course. Like it was. It was very. Yeah. It wasn't. I was. Th I knew that as a, an athlete and as in a coach and as like a human being that wanted to was I loved those experiences. I knew that I was going to love every second. I knew it was going to be hard, and I didn't know whether I was going to be able to do it or not because I didn't know what my body would feel like after doing back to back two fifties over eight months. Um, especially as each race, the, the time between each race became shorter and shorter and shorter. Mm. But what really, the, it's funny, at times throughout the year when, even in the races, when I thought about giving the towel, that motivation, the, the, the depth of like the motivation to, to keep going came from the fact that I, I was doing it for something bigger than me. Yeah. It wasn't about me. It was, it was about a, a purpose beyond myself. It was, it was, um, and that's where a lot of like the drive came from to keep going. Um, but at the same time, every every race was an adventure. It was an experience. Like I, it, it was just no, it, and it didn't matter how hard it was, because mm. I enjoyed it that much, and I was able to to raise money and give back at the same time. It was a really incredible, incredible year. Um, yeah, mm. that was wicked. I mean, just. To the kind of the common thread between all these like challenges and events that you've done is that you know willingness to to push yourself and just see what your body and mind is actually capable of mm -hmm. and um something you've spoken about is the importance of taking risks and um you said that your kind of message is just say yes and take more risks and step into the unknown with curiosity and excitement because we only have one shot at this and i feel like that is just such a good a good message for everyone listening and i just wondered how you know doing these challenges and and not knowing whether you're going to be able to complete it or not how that's then shaped you like shaped your life i think with each with each experience you you grow in a in a in a way in a in a, in a certain way and, mm. and a lot of the time you can't you can't pinpoint how that's going to happen it just it just happens but when I'm 60, when I'm 70, and I look back on what I've achieved and what I've actually done in my life, I want to look back and feel proud of myself. I want to look back and not think, oh, I wish I did that, because I already have that. I look back at my rugby careers at times and think, oh, I just wish I said that. I wish I just did that differently. I never want to feel that again, because mm. it hurts so much. Like reg Regret is not that I... It's a, it's a hard one, because I wouldn't be sat here speaking to you if none of that had happened. Mm. It, I mean, the chances of that happen, it, it, I, you can't say, but I wouldn't, I don't think I'd be sat here if any of that hadn't happened. And I sure. love my life. Sure. I'm very grateful for everything that I have. Like it's, it's amazing, but that doesn't mean it's been easy to get here. Um, and there is def there are definitely things I look back on that I can learn from and take with me as I move forward. Yeah. Um, and I think again, taking risks, stepping into the unknown, even like the personal best potential, it's all the same narrative. It's all the same rhetoric. Like, you don't know how good you can be unless you actually take a risk mm -hmm. until you step into like unknown water. You don't <clears> know <throat> how good you can be. In fact, one of the, that was one of the most powerful quotes that um, my therapist Graham said to me when, when I needed him most at that time was like, be so good. They can't ignore you. <laughs> like, yeah. and that, and that really from like a comp even like a competitive athlete point of view. And, and that was very, be so good they can't ignore you just was like right i need i need to be the best that i can possibly be because then it'll be okay yeah and if i do that then i can be okay with myself as well because i know i'll have nothing to give nothing else to give mm. um yeah i love what you're mm. what like that message and as you just said about regret there's a quote i love that's um 
if you think the price of winning is too high, wait till you get the bill from regret. Mm. I don't want that bill. <laughs> <laughs> I they don't, don't want to know. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's really interesting you're saying that because obviously this idea of personal best is like helping people better themselves. And it's sometimes quite difficult because we don't really know what the better version of ourselves necessarily looks like. Mm. Um, but something Stephen Bartlett spoke about in a recent video was that he feels like he's almost haunted by his potential and it's like it's always there it's always following him and he wants to test it he wants to see Mm. what his potential is and it's only by taking risks and doing the difficult things and being in uncomfortable situations that you actually get closer to that you actually realize that yeah another thing about potential it's um it's another haunting thought actually is that your potential is is kind of limited to your choices like you mm. may have an untapped potential in a different area area of your life but if you don't choose to pursue that area like so you've got to be comfortable you've got to be comfortable with your choices which is why it's so important to understand why you're doing what you're doing if you have a direction if you, if you commit to that direction because it's like at what cost mm. that choice has a cost that pot- there's a potential that you might miss as a result of making that choice you've got to be very aligned with who you want to be like does that make sense yeah it because does because not taking action is an action like mm. that's also a choice to not do anything and it's and it's being comfortable knowing that there is a potential version of you that you could could realize yeah that might never exist be- because you've chosen this direction um which is another haunting thought and something that i've only started recently thinking about and it just it just it's a, it's a good opportunity to check yourself like mm-hmm. am, am i good with who i am right now do i need to make any change in my life that do i need to do i need to just pivot a little bit to to, yeah. to be more of the person i actually really want to be um yeah definitely so i wanted to talk a little bit about why we run mm-hmm. um which is an event that you founded yes. right an ultra marathon event so mm-hmm. how did that come about and then why did you feel like it was it was needed it was needed. It was nothing I ever planned. <laughs> it was an absolute accident. And I'm so grateful for this accident. Um, so part of the the 2022 challenge, the last race of the year was Mexico. It was meant to be in the Copper Canyons. And I was most excited about this race because if you've read, Bo- if I, I'm sure lots of your listeners will have read Born to Run. Mm. It's a fantastic book about uh, the Tauramara Indians who are known as the running people in the Copper Canyons in Mexico. And the last time Ultra X ran this race, the two main characters, Manuel Luna and Arnulfo, they both ran the race. So I thought, oh my God, I'm going to finish this year. It's going to be the big fundraiser. There's a few close mates that were running it as well that had been part of different races throughout the year. We're like, this is, this is it. We're going to just yeah. raise the whole money, the last event. Um, and then eight weeks beforehand, um, it was cancelled. Oh no. Very sadly cancelled. Um, how come? It was uh, it was during COVID and, and sadly that, that, that Mexico wasn't in the best state and they just mm-hmm. couldn't they couldn't put it on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had a choice and that was this was the, the, the choice was like either I rest my laurels on Jordan, which was the next race was three weeks away or four weeks away. I can't remember um, and try and raise as much money and bear, like context. I only ra- I'd only raised six grand at this point because throughout the year I felt very uncomfortable about fundraising. Um, I don't like uh, I've, I've got a bit of a complex about money. I don't mind saying that, but like it's it. I never really pushed the funds rate fundraising yeah. throughout the year because firstly, I didn't know what I was going to do it. So I didn't want to like ask for all this money and then not actually it's achieve what I was going to achieve. Yeah. Not that I was even asking it for myself, which is the hardest <laughs> thing to get over. Um, <laughs> it was going to a really amazing cause, but I just didn't uh, shout about it as much. I was waiting for this moment. Um, so either arrested my laurels or Jordan, and that's a lot of money to raise in four weeks or um, put on my own event. Mm. So I asked for help. Mm. I went to social media and I... I actually rented a campsite. Um, in fact, we decided to do it with a um, Rini McGregor. Uh, she's amazing. She's a dietitian, and she's running Mexico as well. And she said she'd help help me put on the event. So we we joined forces, and uh, she had a contact in uh, Bradford on Avon who had a, a campsite, and uh, we emailed him and I asked if if we can open the campsite in, in November. Um, so I rented the campsite, uh, and then I went to social media and asked whether. 20 people want to come and join uh, to run 250k <laughs> to raise money for Big Moose. Um, and we had 17 people join. Um, two, op- two osteos, two medics, volunteers. Jeff and Chloe, who were the founders of the charity, came for the week as well. And uh, it was three weeks after Jordan. So I'd done 250k in my legs. Three weeks to recover mm. to do another 250k. And um, 
it was the most magical week. It was the most magical week. Like these 17 runners, I asked them all to, to create their own just giving pages, link it to a team page, and yeah. we're going to do this together. So it, this was like the, the power of team sport in this environment. Um, and it just brought out the best in people. It, it, and, and I think where the magic really lied was it wasn't a race. There was no element of racing. There was no pressure on anyone to be fast there was no pressure yeah. on how long it would take you could run on your own you could run with people um you had support every time you came back to camp and so it was th it was loops so we had two different loops day one three and five was one loop we did three times and day two and four was another loop we did three times um so it was mon it was monotonous it was gritty it was yeah. horrible it was like rainy it was cold like we were sleeping in tents in november in in the uk yet people didn't want to leave mm. it was like the happiest <laughs> and if you've seen the documentary you can kind of see it you can feel it yeah. like people are in all this pain and, and like throughout the week smiles just get bigger and bigger like that the environment gets more friend like the physio sophie she said i, I actually don't want to leave oh. i actually don't wanna leave it's, it's this this bubble of life that showcases the best of human and i think these environments in the right conditions I think without the race, because there was no pressure for anyone to be anything other than themselves. It just, you could just be who you were mm. without judgment. Like they, no, it, it's really hard to put into words um, yeah, unless, I, uh, unless yeah. you're there, but it was just magical. It was just magical. And we ended up raising 22 grand in the week. That's um, amazing. So you had this shared yeah. goal, this, this, this kind like people suffered together. Um, and it, you feel like the bonds that you create, it's, it's almost like when you grow up with your schoolmates, you, mm -hmm. you don't see them for five years and then you get back together. It's like nothing's changed. I, mean, you, I feel like the, that closeness of bond that you have with someone when you and if anyone knows when you run, you run for 10 minutes with someone, you share your life story with them. That's just that's just you the do, case of running. You do. Someone um, in the documentary said that actually, that when you're running alongside someone or with someone, you don't really have time to think about what you're saying, so you just say stuff, yeah. and you don't always know what's going to come out. And even from my experience of just doing like group runs and run clubs, like you end up, yeah, like sharing parts of your life that you haven't shared with a close friend. Yeah. It's yeah. it's crazy, but yeah, I watched the the documentary that was made of the event, and it's a beautiful documentary. I mean, the way it's like filmed and been put together is is amazing, but. It was funny because I have never really understood ultra running in the mm. sense that, like, why? You've got a marathon. Why do you need to mm. do more than that? And having watched the documentary, it was like, I get it now. Mm. I, I understand why people want to go and do these ultra distances and why there's such a strong community around it. And um, one of the guys in the documentary, I didn't know his name, but he was interviewed and as he's talking about his experience of running it really hit home because he was saying that like the pain of what he's been through mm. and the pain of the event doesn't even come close and actually to him doing this 250k run is peace, it's peace. like it's, it's peace and i was just like oh you're gonna get emotional but um yeah i, yeah, I was just like, i get it now I get why these people want to do there's, it. There's so many more layers. And actually, ultramarathons don't need to be as scary as they sound. Yeah, because um, it does it's, sound it's, it's scary. A walk and an, <laughs> it's a walk and an eating event, really. Um, but I think what makes it even more special for me is the location as well. It's the it's the people, it's the community, it's the the shared goal, it's the, it's the fact that you are doing a hard thing, you're open, you're vulnerable, you have to be. You've got no energy left to be anything other than yourself after day three anyway, when it's a multi-stage. <laughs> but I think when you add in... Uh, we we did it on the coastal path for the second time. Um, and when you're running along the trails, along the coastal path, you look out to the sea, <coughs> it makes you feel so small in mm. the most positive way. It's like that sense of awe, like you could be watching the sunrise or the sunset and it's just like, look at where I am. Like I, I can, my body gets to do this. I'm, I, like yeah. it's, it's, it's that gratitude. I think that is the main, one of the main takeaways from these experiences. Like it's that sense of gratitude. Like you're, like what the first, um, some of the experience with Ultra X, like when you're doing the multi-stage stuff, you're sleeping in a tent all week. Mm. You're eating dehydrate, dehydrated food. <laughs> you're like, you're, eat, you're having gels every single day. You're like, it, it's just, it's it's very, and, and then you, <laughs> you get back and you try food for the first time again. And you're like, oh my God, that tastes amazing. Yeah. And then the bed, you might be sleeping on a single bed in a, in a rubbish old hotel and you're like, oh my God, this single bed's the best thing I've ever had mm. in my life. It's, it's that sense of like gratitude for the things that you have. Um, you don't need a lot to be happy. And ultramarathons teach you that as well. 
Um, That's interesting, yeah. Yeah. I think what's funny about these events, though, um, is that you put yourself in that position. It's a choice. Yeah, like you yeah. choose to be in that amount of pain and, you know, really like have your back up against the wall. And it's funny because it's like, why would you actively choose to do that? But from what you've said, it's like you learn so much about yourself and then you can carry those lessons through into everyday life. Mm. Um, something Owen said on the podcast, actually, it was like, if you make hard decisions now, your life will be easy. If you make easy decisions easy choices your life will be hard yeah I like that. and it's like that idea of i've been through this so i can deal with yeah. with whatever else i've and got if, on if my you're plate able to choose that then when that ar- eventually arises in real life as mm. it does for everyone be it through loss or circumstances with work or whatever then you're in a much better place mentally to be able yeah. to, to, to handle it to manage it definitely because you've been there before in in a in a way that you could control not yes. that it's ever going to be the same as that uncontrollable curveball that life will inevitably throw at you but at least you'll be i've got this i'm i can do this mm. it comes from a you're a strong you're, you're better equipped to manage that definitely um, i'm sure yeah. um just for everyone listening because we've made this sound you know like this amazing experience which i know it is but in terms of your training mm-hmm. and how you actually prepare your body to run these long distances what advice would you give from your own experience what advice would i give give yourself more time to prepare than you think you need Mm -hmm. um, and gradually ease into it don't go from zero to hero like i did because you'll learn very quickly that like there is a cost i didn't run for eight weeks or 10 weeks after that first experience now in time i've learned those lessons and by Actually, you know what? One of the best lessons I learned was actually during 2022 where less is more. Mm -hmm. Less is really more. Like you you don't need to kill yourself in training to be able to go and do these huge events. Like your body is capable of much more than you think it is. So just I'd rather my athletes go into an event 70% fit but injury-free than 101% fit and carrying a needle. Mm. Um, Because injury means you're out <laughs> mm, um, dnf yeah. yeah yeah that's good because i was i went for a run this morning and it was only like nine nine k that's was, good yeah well i'm, I'm training for half marathons so the, yeah, the nice. distance is building up but i was just thinking to myself how how do you do like 10 times this slow down when you slow when you slow down yeah. you realize you can go a lot further yeah. i think that's the some one of the biggest mistakes people actually make when they start running and they were like oh, i can't run for three k was so hard so yeah but how fast how hard are you working yes like definitely um, i have learned that to be fair because yeah. i kind of just always had one pace whether i was doing 2k or 10k it was like one fast pace yeah and it's like it doesn't always work but now you're um training for an iron man mm-hmm. yep. how is that all going it's and hectic yeah could you like were you good at the swimming and cycling thing? Luck- luckily i swam as a kid so I, swimming right. is like arguably runners would hate me for this arguably sometimes i enjoy swimming more than i do running um mm. there's a there's a there's a quiet and there's a there's a it's almost like mindfulness whereas running i feel you go for a run and you're able to you think about everything it's like wow wow <laughs> thoughts whenever and you're able to it's great it's, it's in mindfulness another way you're able to process those thoughts and let things come and go and that's that's great in itself but swimming all you focus on is the lengths and your breath and counting your strokes and there's like a very internal kind of monotonous yeah. rhythmic flow to it that yeah. is very different to running um but swimming i was lucky enough to swim cycling is the one i can't do mm. i've um my hack for cycling is that i um i got myself a zwift for christmas um, which is a, almost like a virtual reality for cycling. Um, so it's like playing a game. Um, oh, really? It's, it's really cool. It's like a static bike. It's a static bike. Ah. So my road bike, I've just chucked on the Zwift. Um, oh, okay. And it's all linked to a system. So currently I've not been for one ride outside yet, <laughs> but I'm on my bike and I am riding. Um, I am getting fitter. But uh, mm-hmm. I think the hardest part of triathlon training, which I, I probably underestimated a little bit, was the, the time it takes to train three disciplines. Um, yes. I mean, everyone tells you beforehand it's going to be hectic and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Like, train for this. I'm, I'll be all right. But training, I'm training twice a day, five times a week, and then a long one on the weekend, one day off. And it's it's a lot to to think about. Yeah. And it's only going to get more. It's only it's only going to increase in volume um, before June. So that's it's, it's tough. Yeah. But 
I love it. So a I new challenge. Because I had, um, my last guest was Joel Davies and yeah. he's competed in bodybuilding competition yeah. and he was going to do it again. Um, and then he's realized that it's not really what he wants to do. So he's now going to do an Ironman. Is That's he? his goal. And oh, I'm, I'm really excited to see his um, progression and, and how he deals with training. Because he said that like he went and played a football match and realized that he wasn't that fit. Okay. Which is mad. Because you look at him and he's got the yeah. most, you know, insane muscly yeah. physique. Well, um, uh, if he's if he's used to training for a bodybuilding competition, like the, the discipline and the intensity, I, I suppose, psychologically and physically, that would need to go into something like that. Yeah. It'd be cool to see whether he can yeah. apply that to something new. Definitely, really cool. definitely. I think I'll hold off the Ironman for a while. Though. <laughs> I can't swim. <laughs> enjoy, all enjoy your half marathon. I know, first. I know exactly. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Yeah. So, um, just before I ask my final question, I just wondered, obviously, for you in terms of goals moving forward. What's next? You're going to do the Ironman. Are you doing another ultra event? Or yes, I think um, I I love this world that i'm in I, I love what i've been able to to create for myself and the life that i'm living that um as much as steph probably hates how much training i do um the i i, I can't i have such a sense of like achievement and i and i love the lessons that i learn along the way I, it's the act of doing it like i i, I just lo- i really enjoy it um mm. so i think personally from from that standpoint i've got my first hundred mile race this year in the ultra scene i'd like to continue to to see what I can do um, over longer distances um, and just to experience more of the world, go to different places and just to see the world from the ground up, which is part of the experience for me. Like you see a new place, you see a new people. Yeah. Um, Iron Man, we'll see how this one goes, but if that's successful, then it's another, it's another experience. It's another, it's another exciting adventure. Um, other than that, and then it would just be continue to develop why we run. Um, I think, I'm b- I'm very much an advocate of kind of leading with action. Um, so part of what I want to continue to do is is that sounds a bit egoic again, but it's like almost like showing the way, like sh- showing people how yeah. these adventures can enrich your life so much. Like yeah. you you gain so much from them, not only personally, but how y- you might inspire someone to do something for the first time how you meet new people that are aligned and, and you create connections and whether it's like run clubs, meetups, um, events like why we run, like just t- to surround yourself with people that love the same things that you love. Mm. Um, and I think in a world that is so connected yet so disconnected, being with people in person is, is really powerful. Absolutely. Um, is really powerful. So just to, just to continue doing what I'm doing really is, is the, as yeah. the future goals and see how it evolves yeah I think that's so nice that it's like building a community and I feel very much the same with the podcast that I'm hoping it's a community of people who are trying to better themselves and I almost view myself as like a case study in the sense that you know I've picked up new habits and I'm trying new things and I hope that people want to kind of come on this journey mm. with me and yeah, it's nice to actually step outside of the online world because I feel like I'm quite chronically <laughs> online at the minute. And so even just doing these like fitness events and run clubs and you yeah. meet like-minded people who are on a similar journey to yeah. you and it's so encouraging. And I know that's one of your messages is that, you know, we rise by lifting others. Yeah. And I love that. And there's another um, quote, that I think it's to do with like economics where they said that, uh, a rising tide lifts all the boats mm. and it was a, it was a to do with like investing in economic development will help everybody but if mm. you apply that to like general life it's like you know you support your friends you invest time in your relationships and if you do that then everyone benefits by serving yourself you serve others definitely it's a perpetual loop right definitely in fact one of them um, one of the things that when I, I had a coach during 2022, um, man called Luke, Luke Tyberski, who's brilliant, um, had done incredible events. But one of his key, again, I said one of the lessons I learned from him was to less is more. But the other one, he asked me to think about my life philosophy. <laughs> um, and it's it's quite, it's it's an interesting 
thing to think about. It's like, what, what, what are my values? Like, who am I? Mm. It's that really hard question. And I, and I came up with an acronym for life, okay. um, which is something that I really try and live by, actually. And it's live, inspire, fail, evolve. Um, live is the experience part of it. Live is like you, you throw yourself at things. Like you actually live, act, do the thing that scares you. Do the thing that you want to do. Like surround yourself with these. Like th that's the action. The inspire is the result of doing that. The failing is inevit inevitably going to happen as a result of doing things that maybe scare you a little bit too far out of your comfort zone, yeah. but also reframing what failing means. Failing is a lesson. Like failing is never a negative. So if you can flip failure on its head, um, and the result of doing those things is that you evolve and then the cycle starts again. Mm. And it's just a continual perpetual loop. And th that'll, that'll change all throughout life. And it, it's, it's never ending. Like what I'm able to do now in my 30s might not be able to do in my 40s. I might be able to do more. And my values might change. I might shift. When I have kids, maybe things will change. And when you get to your 50s, you're not going to be able to do it when you're in your 30s. So that con continual perpetual cycle, it's the open-mindedness to never stop learning, never stop moving, like never stop evolving. Um, mm. So yeah, that's a, that was an interesting lesson from, from him, which that's I'm very grateful for. Great lesson. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to go away and think about my life philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just borrow well, yours. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've got to make your own. That's the rule. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask you the question I ask everybody, but I feel like that's a perfect answer, unless you have any other advice um, to help people achieve their personal best. Oh, I think this is more related to why we run and how that came to be. But um, I remember writing on a, on a, on a, um, it was an Instagram post, I can't remember, <laughs> but the quote was, um, there's always opportunity in the chaos. You've just always got to choose to see it. Okay. I like that. Beca yeah. Yeah. I, how do you, how do you describe that? The chaos was that the event was cancelled. There was, there was no opportunity, but, uh, well, for all sense and purposes, there was nothing there. Mm. I chose to put on the event, not that I'm beating myself up, but like, the, the action was the choice to actually create something it was the opportunity so that was the opportunity in the chaos yeah um, and it's so easy when life isn't going your way yeah to get really bogged down in that and just think well what am i going to do now mm -hmm. but yeah even if it's like such a small a small thing that you can take out of it like every cloud is a silver lining mm. um yeah i like that sometimes that could just be accepting yeah that moment what <laughs> yeah it is. exactly <laughs> Yeah. exactly well um yeah amazing so where can people go if they if they want to find out where you are what you're doing cool so instagram's probably the easiest yeah. um it's just lewis underscore robling and then if they want to know a little bit more about why we run um they can go to the website which is it's why we run .com. um yeah amazing and cool. i'd encourage everyone to watch the documentary because it's so good um but thank, thank you. you so much for today i've really enjoyed it yeah me too thank you for having me no you're so welcome i feel like i'm so lucky to sit down and have conversations with people like yourself where i get to you know walk away i feel so inspired and motivated and i just really hope that people who listen to these episodes feel exactly the same way and i'm sure they will I so um so. Well, we'll see Good luck with all the training and the events. I'm sure you're going to smash it and uh, all the best. Thank you so much. Cheers, Ruby. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for listening. <laughs>